We just changed everything, so hold on. Hi everybody, my name is Christy Green, and this is Michelle Negretti, and this is Estacia Huddleston, and we're part of the team, one of the five teams. Um, Michelle is with Strata Design, and Estacia is with Anima, and I'm with Radical here in Santa Fe. And uh, I must say we're quite honored and privileged to be here among you all and among the teams. And thank you so much for um, being here in the middle of the day, especially. <clears throat> Let's see. There's so much that's been said as part of what we're, we're proposing as well, which is good. There's good compliment. Do I have to point this anywhere or just, just push it? Okay. Instant gratification. So um, what we're proposing is the organizing and inspirational principle of watershed. And we mean the watershed in terms of ecological and cultural watershed. As you all know, the watershed is the point at which water originates in the mountains and where it flows in the streams and rivers. It's also how it flows through our pipes and through our own bodies. It's how water goes up into the air and down into the ground. Culturally speaking, it's a, a dividing point. It's, it's something that happens that after which nothing is ever the same. So for example, you know, the Great Depression or World War II or um, electing Obama. Um, so, uh, <laughs> <clears throat> so you may think it's obvious that this is what we've chosen. I just wanted to give you a moment to read a few facts about water, which I'm sure some of you already know. Um, I'm just going to let you read these. Can you see them or shall I read them? I should read them? Yeah, okay. So by 2025, 52 countries, two-thirds of the world's population will likely have water shortages. Most of the world's people must walk at least three hours to fetch water. The United States consumes water at twice the rate of the industrialized nations. 26 trillion liters of water are flushed down toilets by Americans every day. 80% of all vertebrate wildlife in the Southwest depend on riparian areas for at least half of their lives. And New Mexico has the lowest land to water ratio of all 50 states. So we thought it was kind of an obvious choice that in this case, in this design, in this uh, strategic vision, that water gets to trump humans. Or at least we get to pay attention to water and that everything then plugs into valuing it. Um, how many of you have seen that bumper sticker that says, um, stop treating your soil like dirt? Anybody? Well, uh, I was thinking we should make one that says stop treating your water like shit. Uh, <laughs> flushing it down the toilet. <laughs> so um, this is an invocation, an invitation to express gratitude, and that's how we would like to start and continue. Um, so our principles within our watershed uh, theme are um, phased, progressive, and fluid. They don't start and stop clearly or in a linear fashion. They are circular and circulatory. Um, they are infiltrate, meander, and replenish. And with each of these, there is a time frame. We're imagining infiltrate being one to two years, meandering being the third and fourth year, and replenish being five years and beyond. So it's iterative, and it's, again, it's not a start-stop. It's hopefully one phase building on the next. And within the phases, um, we are offering the organizing um, programs, the basic programs and principles that we'd like to activate on the space, and they are learn, live, play, create, and work. Each one of these is tied to water directly. We understand that uh, water is work, water is living, water is play, water is creating and that everything that we propose ties back to water as um, whether we decide if it's beneficial or not. If it's good for water, it's good for life, it's good for um, the economy and the ecology. So basically water is the ecological and the cultural and the economic uh, currency that we're operating with. Yeah. So um, we don't have many maps that show Massing studies or buildings, basically what we're talking about is more a systemic uh, approach in terms of how people live here, how people work here, how people play here. We do have maps on our boards that show where those activities take place. 
but for example, we are thinking that um, there would be multiple educational entities based on the campus, not just one four-year higher education institution, that we would have multiple types of housing options. There would be live work, temporary or transitional housing, multiple family housing, and that's a big driver of the place and participation in place. And that we would have multiple forms of business startups, including uh, existing businesses that might have satellite offices here as well. Um, all green industry related transformation on the site, including effluent water, um, rainwater, and soil building, solar and energy efficiency would all be used as curriculum development. So if we're assessing what happens in a building, whether it's does the building get a solar panel, panel or a gray water system, those all become activators of education and then employment. You guys still with me? <laughs> uh, so like I said, the first phase is infiltrate, and this is where we propose to assess and plan. So we would look at what is the capacity of the existing buildings? We're not gonna go in and take things out. It's what's the, what's the capacity for gray water, rain water, solar? What's the capacity for teaching in this place? What's the, what's the capacity for activating what already is? Um, in a lot of the, um, the vacant and underutilized sites, rather than having those, I don't know if anybody noticed when you drove in today, like you could hardly see because there was soil blowing everywhere. Um, those we're imagining as placeholders of life, so creating living sponges with the soil. So all of those would be graded slightly with landform grading techniques, and they would be seeded with a dense cover crop. So that what we're doing is creating life in a place before we start to build. So something, every action has at least three corresponding stacked functions of benefit. Oh, the other thing I've got to say is everything at first and hopefully throughout is mostly low tech, light touch. And then we can reflect on what we do as interventions and then go back and do more and, and more sort of permanently as we go along after we learn um, from phase one and two. This is just an image of what we're calling the reservoir. And the reservoir is what is now the uh, main sort of promenade coming into the campus. And that we're thinking as the first phase of infiltration where we would have lots of types of, of pop-ups, pop-up businesses, pop-up medical clinic, food trucks. Um, again, where we could do demonstrations of whatever um, green industry type um, interventions we've done, like maybe breaking up some pavement or harvesting water through curb cuts. Um, also where we would invite any type of uh, artistic intervention that has to do with water or a way to explain and celebrate artistically what we're doing in terms of the green industry design. And these are just some images of what I just talked about. There's a concrete that was pulled up and made into a cover crop. There's a landform grading, which is passive water harvesting on, on contour. Working with local participants and residents to actually do the work and learn how to do the work so this can be replicated beyond um, the campus boundaries. And then what does it feel like? It feels like lots of things happening in little simple spaces, great activities, interaction, fun learning, hopefully um, not too heavily programmed that there's a right or wrong, but there's an invitation to play and participate. Okay, we're going to switch a little bit. Um, so the next phase would be meander, and that would be years three and four. And so this is, you know, taking that first initial quick try and get the campus activated, used in transition from being a private institution to an asset where the community feels welcome, um, to a place where people want to stay a little longer, maybe start to make this place their home, their place of business. So in this phase, you know, we're, we're expanding the idea of, of using gray water and rainwater in the buildings. We're introducing permeable paving in parking areas. We're trying to create more housing opportunities on site. This would be a phase where we would use new build, whereas in the previous phase, we would be adaptive reuse of the dormitories. We're trying to get more people on the campus all the time. We see this as a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week home in the heart of the campus. Um, we we'll see continued opportunities to train and educate people, bringing in the local schools that are adjacent, bringing in nonprofits, really building those partnerships that were part of the um, initial phase, and using the business incubators and other um, startup facilitators, facilitation spaces on site 
to start to grow live-work opportunities so people can live and work in the same environment. So we're really trying to create a diverse um, environment where many people can live. If you're young, you're old, you're working, you're playing, all in one space. Oh, right, thank you. And then in this phase too, we're really trying to reach out across the campus into the surrounding areas. So we're looking at, you know, really piercing through to um, Cerritos, really piercing through to St. Michael's, and taking the already um, adjacent trail systems and bringing them through the campus. So like some of the other previous projects, we want to see more connectivity, but we really want to kind of control the vehicular um, access to the campus. We want cars to move through, but we want them to be secondary to other modes of transportation. I think we're almost out of time. Um, but basically the third phase, the replenish phase, is the one that happens in the fifth year and beyond in which, um, during which time we would do stewardship and demonstrations to document what has been done over time, how we penetrate the boundary of the campus and extend beyond to the neighboring um, uh, parks, schools, um, residential areas. And again, the stacked functions of living um, affordably and regeneratively with also different types of growing of symbiotic businesses. So we're talking about tech film, art, green industry, all being housed here and demonstrated here, like Sean was saying, having it be explicit and celebrated rather than hidden. Um, the solar, the, the rainwater, the film, everything that's happening is an opportunity for learning and for business. Um, and this is up kind of by the dorms, again, reusing existing buildings, creating a, a focal hub for residents, um, for productive landscapes, and for celebrating the harvesting and, and the reuse of water. We're finished? Okay. And then the map that we have, um, you can just come talk to us on the boards about specifically where everything we've talked about would actually go. Um, thank you. Thank you.